So the term sustainability has become a popular catchphrase in recent years. You often hear people talk about sustainable e development, sustainable growth, or sustainable energy. But what do people really mean when they talk about sustainability? So a common definition refers to the importance of being able to meet the needs of both present and future generations, while also taking into account the social, environmental, economic, and technical aspects and limitations to sustainability. And oftentimes when people talk about sustainability, the topic of energy comes up. So in the United States, the electric power sector is the largest, single largest consumer of primary energy, accounting for 40% of overall energy use. And, while, and so this sector is very important for meeting national sustainability goals. But oftentimes, with, uh, when research and policy uh, focuses on sustainability, they focus on only one or two measures of sustainability at a time, and sometimes miss the larger picture of sustainability. So, and while it's important to continue to have those in-depth discussions of sustainability and to get a better understanding of how technologies compare, it's also important to look at the larger picture. So my research, I've looked at 13 different commercially available technologies, and I've compared them across six different criteria. And for each of these criteria, it's measured per unit of electricity that's actually generated. So the first one, for example, is job creation. So it's the number of jobs that are created per unit of electricity. Then the levelized cost of energy is the total cost to own and operate an electric power plant divided by the number of electricity units. And for greenhouse gas emissions, I looked at the overall life cycle effects. So from mining or assembling the components of a power plant all the way through to the end of the life of the power plant when it's taken apart and disposed of. Then for water consumption, that's the amount of water that's actually used up through the electricity cycle. So if water's evaporated to run a heat turbine, uh, that would be counted as water consumption. And then land use, I just looked at the amount of land that's actually occupied by the power plant. And then the final criteria I considered is the capacity factor, which is more or less the percentage of electricity that's generated compared to the maximum amount that the power plant is rated to generate. So, and the ideal power plant, the most sustainable one, would have low, um, a low cost, a high capacity factor, and low land and water use, and a high job creation. So first, let's look at coal, which is the primary source of electricity in the United States, accounting for about 40%. So coal has a really, gr really great uh, capacity factor, meaning that it can produce a lot of electricity as it's needed for society. And it also has a fairly low levelized cost of energy, though it has been increasing in recent years. But coal also is the largest greenhouse gas emitter. It is the largest by far, and it also consumes a lot of water through the heat cycle. So next, let's look at natural gas, which is the second uh, largest source of electricity in the United States. It also has a high capacity factor. It has fairly low land use for the power plant itself, but it also uses a lot of water and is the second highest greenhouse gas emitter, about half of coal. And nuclear is the next largest source, ha um, has a fairly low land use, high capacity factor, high, but high water use, and also has, uh, but has very low greenhouse gas emissions. But there's also safety concerns you have to think about with nuclear, and also uh, natural s national security issues. So hydroelectric is the first renewable source that we're looking at, and, this, and renewables only account for about 12% of the electricity generated in the United States, but hydroelectric makes up over half of that. And so hydroelectric is the lowest cost of energy of any of the technologies we're looking at. Uh, it has very low greenhouse gas emissions per unit of electricity generated, uh, and it has the most jobs created per unit of electricity. However, when you build a reservoir, it takes up a lot of land behind the reservoir, which is covered with water, and it consumes a lot of water through evaporation. And most of the potential reservoirs that we could look at have already been used in the United States, though there are some dams that don't have power plants. 
So onshore wind is the next largest source of renewable energy. It has a fairly low levelized cost of energy, has low greenhouse gas emissions and water consumption, but it has a fairly low capacity factor because you can only generate electricity when there's wind. And the, when the, there's wind, it does not always match up with when electricity is demanded. So offshore wind isn't commercially available quite yet in the United States, but it is in Europe. And Maine has the first grid-connected offshore wind turbine, which is exciting. So offshore wind has the lowest greenhouse gas, or it has some of the lowest greenhouse gas emissions, the lowest water consumption, and the lowest land use, or seabed use in this case. Um, but it is still a developing technology, so the cost is still about double that of onshore wind. And um, it has a fairly high uh, job creation. So next, let's look at biopower. And so this type of biopower I'm looking at is specifically burning wood. And the it doesn't really stand out on either being the best or the worst in most of the criteria. It has a fairly high capacity factor, but overall it's fairly unremarkable. And next, geothermal. I looked at two different types of geothermal, which pumps hot water out of the earth and then uses that to generate electricity. So flash steam directly uses the water that's pumped out of the ground, whereas binary transfers heat using a secondary liquid. And this is important for the sustainability criteria because even though these are both geothermal, they have very different sustainability aspects. So for instance, binary uses about 42 times as much water as flash steam, and flash steam is much less expensive than binary because it is a little bit more developed technology. But both technologies use a lot of land that are r that's required for drilling, and um, they both have er, and um, bi and flash has um, high greenhouse gas emissions, whereas binary has the lowest greenhouse gas emissions of these technologies. So solar PV is great in terms of water consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, but it also has a very high levelized cost of energy. And it depends on when the sun is shining, so it has a very low uh, capacity factor as well. And another type of solar, concentrating solar power, and this is specifically the trough technology, uses it, or it concentrates the light's rays and heats hot oil behind it, which then runs a thermoelectric cycle. And so it uses quite a bit of water. It emits some greenhouse gases, and it, um, but it also produces a lot of jobs. Um, but currently, the levelized cost of energy is still pretty high. So at this point, you might be thinking, what do we do with all of these criteria? There's so many different criteria. Some technologies do a lot better in terms of cost or electricity availability, while others do better based on criteria such as greenhouse gas emissions or water use. So how do we decide what to do? How do we move toward a more sustainable energy future? So that's where tools such as multi-criteria decision analysis, or MCDA, can be really useful. They can take all of these criteria and preference weights that, th that society can set and then come up with an overall ranking of technologies. So if I prefer one criteria over another, I can give it a higher weight, and so it will be more important in the overall ranking of technologies. So I did this with the technologies and criteria that we considered. And as you can see, biopower actually had the highest sustainability score. Now, I want to make clear that I'm not saying that we should now go switch our whole electric power s sector over to biopower, uh, but this is an important aspect to consider when we're looking at overall sustainability. Because if we looked through a very narrow lens and only considered one or two sustainability factors at a time, we might be missing the overall larger sustainability goals that we may have. So as we look to move toward a more sustainable energy system, it's important that we make sure that we're very careful to recognize what criteria are important to us and how we value those different criteria as we look to um, set new policies and research goals. Thank you. <laughs>